Okay, um, I've got a, I've had a couple people request um, some beer samplings of some of my home brews that I've made, and I have uh, here today um, a few bottles left of my kitchen sink IPA. Uh, this is a beer I made back in November, uh, and it's got I made it using the Cooper's IPA. Uh, the uh, a can of the Cooper's Lager, and I added oh, a whole bag of my own homegrown Centennial hops. You know, it was the first uh, first harvest for these hops, uh, first year. I wasn't that optimistic about them, so but I just decided I'd put them in a beer and see what happens. Centennial's appropriate for the IPA style. Um, the original gravity for this beer was 1.055, and I haven't really calculated the overall IBUs on it, but I have a feeling it's between 50 and 60 IBUs. Um, so anyway, I, I haven't had one of these in a while. I'll give it a shot. It, it turned out pretty good, so let's see what happens. It's been in my fridge for oh, probably about three weeks. Um, there we go. So, let's see how it pours. Okay. Seems pretty nice. Nice uh, hoppy IPA bitterness. I mean, uh, I can tell. I don't know the aroma. I can smell some Centennial. These again, it was a first year harvest, so they weren't really strong on their on their aroma. But it's a typical Centennial smell. Uh, looks like there's some chill haze on this. So it's hard. Yeah, it's fairly clear. Anyway, let's. Uh, Smells good. IPAs lose their aroma after a while, um, unless you have the hops in the bottle themselves. It's been almost three months for this beer, but the bitterness should all be there. Well, that's good. You know, seems to have improved actually a lot. It's very drinkable. Um, it's got a nice. Uh, nice balance to it now. I mean, at first I thought it was, when I first made it, I thought it was a little bit too bitter, um, but this has really smoothed out well. Um, more of an English style IPA, I'd say, but it's got a lot of bitterness and some aroma to it. And I use this just with the Cooper's dry yeast that came with both those cans, so this is a good beer. Um, I pleasantly surprised, anyway. So, uh, cheers. Oh. I'm going to be, in addition to this, I'm going to be reviewing, immediately following me consuming this beverage, uh, this Best Extra Stout that I made um, a little bit before this. Actually, it's two weeks older than this particular beer. That beer I made with uh, Cooper's Original Series Stout, one can of Cooper's Unhopped Dark Malt Extract, and about 500 grams of dextrose. That's all I did, and I added the... Uh, the yeast that came with the can. I really was pleased with that beer. It's just a simple beer. Um, I think I made it up to 20 liters. Anyway, I'm going to have a little bit of this and I'll be right back with the, uh, with the taste of the Cooper Stout. See you shortly. Okay, so now I'm pouring my uh, Miss Extra Stout here. Um, I really haven't had this in a while, so hopefully I should have Poured a little bit out of the keg first, because I mean out of the line first. But let's uh, let's give this a shot. Uh, St. Patrick's Day is coming up, so it's a good time to sample your stouts if you have any there. Um, 
looks like a real nice brown uh, head on that. This was uh, force carbonated. Again, I, as I had said previously, the ingredients are the uh, Cooper's Original Series Stout, one can of the dark malt extract and 500 grams of uh, dextrose. Uh, just using the sachet of yeast that came under the lid. Uh, even better would probably be if you could harvest the Cooper's yeast from the bottles, the pale ale bottle, Cooper's uh, you know, commercial bottle. But uh, you can see a real nice uh, frothy uh, uh, head there and soft bubbles. It's been around for a while. so um, Not a huge amount of aroma because there was no aroma hops in it. Um, it's more of a malty smell. So uh, let me give a give this a swirl. Mm, that's just it's got some chocolate kind of overtones to it. I didn't add any chocolate, but it's got a little chocolate overtone to it. It's a real nice stout, you know. No chalky bitterness. Um, just a good flavor overall. I mean, I really like it. Um, it's pretty much at its perfect stage, actually. Mm. Be good with um, after dinner, with some desserts. Um, just yummy. So, if you're looking for a stout, a simple stout recipe that tastes, you know, first rate, I have to give this one big time thumbs up. It's uh, about as clean as you can get. Um, it's a real nice beer. Anyway. One last thing I'm going to do, I made the Cooper's Unreal Ale last week, about five days ago, or was it six days ago? Six days ago, and I'm just going to do a little gravity reading, um, see, where, see where it is. That beer, the original gravity was 1.050, and I added some Amarillo hops. The beer was made using the Cooper's Real Ale beer kit, uh, one box of uh, Cooper's Brew Enhancer 1, and... Uh, one box of Cooper's dry malt extract. Um, so far I've taste, had some samplings of it and it is spot on, it's real nice. Those Amarillo hops actually added some really good flavorings to them as well. So again, <clears throat> enjoy the stouts as St. Patrick's Day comes up. Cheers. And this is a sweet beer. I mean, just a good beer all, all around. Cheers everybody. All right, final, just doing a little gravity. Just this is on day six. I'm going to keep this beer in the fermenter a little bit longer, probably a total of at least two weeks. But I just wanted to get a sense for where it is right now and if I need to be concerned about anything. Um, you can tell it really needs to settle out in there. It's pretty bubbly too. Uh, wow, it's pretty well fermented. Um, it's down below. Uh, it's, well, the foam's there, but anyway, you can see based on these lines here, there's the 1010 line. And it's still fermenting. That's where you see all these bubbles coming in. So, obviously, I'm not ready to bottle. There's the 1010 line. It's kind of bubbling all over the place. I'm going to let it sit for a while. Once it settles down, obviously, it'll change as it goes. I'm not ready to bottle this yet. So, like I said, I'll probably give it at least another week. Um, and it, uh, again, it looks like it's going well. Beer, there's a lot of sediment on the bottom of the fermenter. Uh, the big croissant is, is gone. In fact, I can take off my, uh, my croissant collar now and uh, just rinse that out. That's the convenience of the croissant collar. So it makes it easy to clean while the, the croissant is soft. And then you can actually put your uh, croissant collar into the uh, dishwasher if you want. That'll take care of everything. So. Um, all right. Well, again, cheers. Um, we'll get we'll get back at you. I, I'm planning on doing another brew later on this week. Uh, maybe uh, a pilsner or something like that. Adding some uh, Hertzberger hops. So uh, I look forward to doing that.